you know, I in, on one hand, I agree with Jody. I think Howard's going to get <clears throat> his carries. I do. Uh, and maybe he gets the equal amount that Sanders gets. I mean, we even we saw that when Boston Scott and Jordan Howard were the were the bell cows. They were pretty much equal in carries. And we could see that again. We could see Sanders and Howard with the balanced uh, a balanced carries and then Boston Scott be that third down scat back type. Not as quick, obviously, as Kenny Gainwell, but his hands are pretty good. If the Saints are going to be without their two stud offensive tackles and are going to be going with backups, it may not lend itself to a lot of offensive scoring drives. What if this becomes a punter's game? Can Aaron Sipos win this game for the Philadelphia Eagles? It would be nice if it became a punter's game because Sipos is good. And the Eagles have already played two games this year where the punter hasn't seen any action at all. So yeah. if the Eagles are forcing punts, that's a good thing. Eight football Friday here on Birds 365. We're counting down to the kickoff of the Saints Eagles. One thing I know both of these two guys like is one o'clock game on Sunday. Yes. The only travel is down to Lincoln Financial Field, and the kickoff will be one one o'clock, which which will make both John McMullen and Game Day Ed Kratz is life a little bit easier. How are you, Eddie? Hey, I'm doing great, Jody. Good to see you. How about me, Ed? Not good to see me. Oh, yeah. hey, John. Yeah, how's it going? <laughs> <laughs> I get it. I get more excited to see Jody myself. You, you see, you see, uh, John altogether too much. All right, Ed. Um, John and I were going back and forth about if the uh, Saints are down uh, their two tackles, that it will give the Eagles a chance to get to the quarterback. Do you have faith that? Either of their defensive ends, you want to put uh, a third one in there. You, somehow, Ryan Kerrigan comes back from the, the, the dead. I would highly doubt that. Um, Derek Barnett and or uh, Josh Sweat, can they take advantage of the Saints being uh, undermanned at the tackle position and wreak havoc in the Saints' backfield on Sunday? You know, it's hard to even remember that Ryan Kerrigan's on this team, to be honest. <laughs> I mean, he's played, what, 10 snaps, 12 snaps. He, he, he rarely plays. And, um, boy, what a, what a free agent bust he has been so far. So, no, I don't see a resurrection of Ryan Kerrigan in this game. But, you know, not having two tackles, and John mentioned this against the Broncos, it's hard to play in the NFL when you don't have competent tackles. And the Broncos were without their two tackles. And the Eagles didn't sack Teddy Bridgewater very often. I think they only had one sack. But, you know, they did move him around in that pocket a little bit and made life uncomfortable for him. So, you know, I think they can take advantage of the Saints if their tackles aren't there. I don't think you'll see a seven-sack day because I just don't think these defensive ends are equipped to, you know, pile up sacks like that. And they're very thin at that spot. <clears throat> you know, after – uh, Derek Barnett and Josh Sweat, they, there's not much there. I mean, Jannard Avery has been playing some, and, you know, he's another guy that you you scratch your head and think, you know, how in the world is he getting snaps? But that's kind of what it's come to. So, you know, we've seen Sweat flash a little bit. Barnett, you know, he had – I think he did have that sack against the Broncos, and then he made the, you know, the roughing the passer penalty. Uh, still not sure about that flag. But – I'm not sure these guys are equipped to pile up sacks. You know, you'd like to see Javon Hargrave get one again. He came out of the gate six and five games, hasn't had one since. Um, Fletcher Cox, but I don't know. I think they can make life uncomfortable if these tackles don't play. But if you're expecting, you know, a big sack to quarterback day, I wouldn't I wouldn't go there. Yeah, that's interesting because I've been talking about the tackles, <laughs> and it would be I think James Hurst would kick out to left tackle. Um, and Landon Young would be the right tackle, who's a rookie six-round pick. So it's more about that side than really the Eagles. But the interior, where the Eagles do have some talent, isn't great either on, on the Saints' offensive line, typically. Um, typically, the offensive tackles, when Ryan Ramsick is out there and uh, Teron Armstead are out there, they're really good. I mean, that's the best sure. duo in the NFL, but you're right. This might be a week for, for Javon Hargrave and Fletcher Cox as well. This is just not 
what we think of uh, as the New Orleans Saints right now from an offensive perspective. Well, and we saw, you know, the Los Angeles Chargers, the one side of their line was very weak, too. The right side was yeah. supposed to be, <clears throat> you know, kind of fill in guys. And, you know, they didn't really make a lot of noise against the Chargers, obviously. You know, they didn't hit Herbert at all, really. Yeah. So, uh, you know, we've seen. Now he many- got the ball out quick, though. Herbert got the ball out quick. Simeon is not known for getting the ball out quick. So there's a yeah. little bit of a difference there as well. <clears throat> Yeah, well, you're right. You need competent line play, <clears throat> excuse me, to be a success. And right now, the Eagles, I'm not sure they're equipped to take advantage of <clears throat> depleted offensive lines. So um, it'll, it'll be interesting to see if they can do that against the Saints at home. Trevor Simeon, like you said, John, as the quarterback, um, they're going to need to take advantage of it. And they're going to have to put pressure on him and, uh, to win this game. All right, game day, Ed. Uh, I was talking with John in the first segment about the good news coming out of Eagles practice yesterday. The fact that Dallas Goddard was out there, not going to know probably till Sunday whether he's going to be a go and pass all the concussion, <laughs> concussion protocols. But the fact that he got out there on the field with his team, a good sign, as did Miles Sanders, which the coach addressed the day before, said, if he's healthy, he's our starter. And I got an issue with it, both in football and basketball and the use of the word starter, Who's, whoever starts doesn't really mean a whole hell of a lot. Now, most times, starters are, are your predominant play. They get more snaps. They play more than other players. But sometimes one play, a starter, get out there on the field, be done. You're not seeing them again until the third quarter. Miles Sanders will be their starter. Does that mean Miles Sanders will get more carries this week? If he's active and he's part of the game day roster, does that mean he gets more carries than either Scott or Howard? I I think it could. Um, You know, Sirianni's been pretty consistent during his absence that, yeah, he's our guy. We miss Miles Sanders. Um, You know, and I don't know whether that's coming from the front office, you know, the Howie Roseman edict that, yeah, we, we need to see Miles Sanders out there because we drafted him in the second round. But, yeah, I think I think if he's healthy, if he's 100 percent and he's ready to go, I, I think you're going to see him have a big role in the game plan. And you might sprinkle in some Jordan Howard and <clears throat> you might see Boston Scott and or Kenny Gainwell on third down. But, yeah, I think Miles Sanders is going to uh, get plenty of snaps and plenty of carries. And, you know, listen, if he fumbles or if he doesn't have the production that we're used to seeing these previous weeks with Jordan Howard, uh, in Boston, Scott, then you'll reevaluate during the week leading up to next week's game uh, against the Giants. But, um, yeah, I think he'll have a role if he's active. Now, he hasn't been activated from the from the injured reserve yet. He's been placed in this 21-day window. Um, but I suspect he will be activated. Um, the Eagles will have to free up some room on their 53-man roster. We'll see who goes. But, uh, yeah, I think if he plays, if he starts, if he's 100% healthy, he, he's going to get the lion's share of the snaps. And me, I wouldn't do it. I'm, I'm more – I don't like to mess with a successful formula. You know, I'm a, mm. I'm a pretty suspi- uh, uh, superstitious guy. You know, I feel like if, if I got a lucky pair of underwear and my team's winning when I'm wearing them, man, I'm, I'm going to make sure <laughs> they're clean on game day so I can put them on again. And even if they're not clean, I'm going to wear them because they're my lucky underwear. So I'm a superstitious guy. I think you don't mess with success and a winning formula. Um, and, and so, but I don't think Sirianni's going to see it that way. I think he's going to give Sanders the football when he's in, if he's healthy. Now you beat me to the punch, Ed, because that's where I was going to go. What would you do? Not, we all know what the Eagles are going to do. If Miles is healthy, Miles is going to be the guy, but, um, Jordan Howard has been effective. Austin Scott has been effective. Uh, Kenny Gainwell, interestingly, has been the one who's taken a step back in in the absence of Miles Sanders. Other guys are going to play, though. So if we stipulate Miles is going to be the guy, um, See, how does the I, rotation uh, By look? the way, I won't stipulate to that. I don't think that's the way it's going to well, play out. I, I, I think I'm, Jordan I'm, Howard will get the most carries for the Philadelphia Eagles this weekend. Well, okay. Um from 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 Nick's standpoint, I'll say, you know, because Nick has said he's the starter, he's going to be the guy when he comes back. So I'll rephrase it. If if that's the case, and the head coach isn't uh, overtly lying to us, oh yeah, I think he's gilding the lily. Well, yes, it's I possible do. he wouldn't be the first. I'm I'm saying, but if if 
we take him at his word. And Nick has largely been honest to us. Um, what does the rotation look like? Who was the odd man out? They're not going to play all four running backs. Who who was the odd man out from your pers- perspective? Well, I think, you know, Nick has talked about going with a hot hand. And if you look at who has had the hot hand, it's been Jordan Howard and Boston Scott. And like you said, Gainwell has kind of been just sort of an afterthought. Um, and, and it's interesting how this team has evolved. When you look early in the season, Miles Sanders wasn't really part of too many game plans. I mean, this was a Jalen Hurts production. And the running game was an afterthought. We've seen that evolve, obviously. So I don't think he can hold that against Sanders because early in the season, he really wasn't involved in the game planning. Um, and it was just RBOs, him and Gainwell. Their runs. Their runs. Ed. Yeah, every play's a run until Jalen Hurts decides to pull it yes. and keep it and, you know, improvise. But th- this offense has evolved. And um, <clears throat> in the early going, it was Sanders and Gainwell. And I think that's changed. So I think Gainwell would be the odd man out here. I think you put him down on game day. I don't see really any any sense. And maybe that's a question we can ask Nick Sirianni. Does he envision <clears throat> the possibility of a game day roster that has four running backs on it? I think that's too many. Um, so I think Gainwell probably takes a seat. It could be Scott, but if Sirianni's true to his word and he says we like to go with the hot hand, that hot hand has belonged to Howard and Scott in, in Sanders' absence. And, you know, let me just point this out, too, is, you know, we've seen kind of the Sanders-Howard backfield before. We saw it in 2018. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> and, and I thought it was kind of a, the blossoming of a thunder and lightning type of operation where you have the home run lightning bolt and Sanders and you have that thunder hammer and in, uh, in, in Jordan Howard. And, and it never really kind of de- developed Howard. Two games. It was great. Two games, Buffalo and <laughs> yeah. Chicago. They were, they were great on the field together. And, and I thought, you know, Hey, the Eagles have something here with this duo. And then Howard hurt his shoulder, missed the last six games. And then, you know, he was off to Miami after that. So you know, here we are two years later, and it's kind of, you know, I kind of like looking at that is, yes, yeah, Sanders and Howard in the backfield to me makes sense because they're two different styles uh, of running back. And you can play them on the field at the same time, which we saw them do two years ago. So, you know, I in, on one hand, I agree with Jody. I think Howard's going to get <clears throat> his carries. I do. And uh, maybe he gets the equal amount that Sanders gets. I mean, we even we saw that when Boston Scott and Jordan Howard were the were the bell cows. They were pretty much equal in carries. And we could see that again. We could see Sanders and Howard with the balanced, uh, a balanced carries. And then Boston Scott be that third down scat back type. Not as quick, obviously, as Kenny Gainwell, but his hands are pretty good. Uh, and, and Scott can do things in the open field. So. I think Gainwell's probably the now, one. Now, real quick, him. Jody, before you jump in, uh, uh, with Jordan Howard, you you and I have talked to Jordan a number of times. Jordan was pretty yeah. honest in the offseason saying he wasn't getting any calls. Uh, he thought his career might be over. Um, and he got himself in shape. He lost some weight. He did everything possible. Had a great training camp. Any possibility, any possibility at all, do the Eagles say, you know what? This guy doesn't have much left physically. We heard, you know, Doug Peterson say that about Jay Ajahi back in the day. This guy's not the physical player. We've been scheming him up. Any chance they just say, thanks for the the work. Thanks for the effectiveness. You know, Boston's our guy. Kenny's our guy. Miles is our guy. Any chance of that happening? And saying goodbye to Jordan Howard? Well, not necessarily goodbye not, as far as release, although they could release him and get him back on the practice squad, but just saying you're the odd man out. Boy, I'll tell you, I would put that at, at very slim, to be honest. Um, I, I really think Howard, they love Howard, and the teammates have talked about Howard and how he he's just a hammer, I think, that this team needs. And, you know, he's always been a guy, when you get around the goal line inside the five, he's, he's always gonna, going forward. Yeah, he's going to more – I mean, he's got 37 career touchdowns, I think it is, on the ground, which is a really high number since entering the league, and I think it was 2016. So, you know, when he he didn't play much last year, and then he got hurt in the final six games in 2019 with the Eagles. So he's done it in, you know, a a relatively few number of games. So I don't think they would say goodbye to Jordan Howard. Listen, Boston Scott – 
is a restricted free agent at the end of the year. Um, you know, I think they're going to say goodbye to him, but I, I think they like what they have in Howard. And I, I don't see that happening, John. I think, I think they like him on this roster. I think he plays the kind of style that Nick Sirianni wants. He's that, he's that, uh, Mac he's physical. Yeah. Yeah. Like what's the, the running Marlon Mack, you know, he's like that Marlon Mack type running back that Sirianni had in Indianapolis. So I, I think they like him. I think Scott and Gainwell are kind of the same player. Gainwell's probably a little quicker, like I said. So, you know, it could be Scott that sits. It's not going to be Howard. If it's Howard, you know, listen, I'll, uh, I don't know what I'll do. I'll, I'll, I'll walk to the burn it game down. or I, I don't know. Burn it down. Yeah, uh, no, I don't want to, I don't want to make any promises, but I, it's Howard won't just be. Just don't at, pick up the Miami tape. Just if, don't pick it up. Jordan Howard is uh, the guy who's the odd man out. Ed Kratz will wear his non-wash <laughs> underwear on his head here on Birds 365. That will be the request we put out. Nobody uh, wants and, to see that, Jerry. Well, you you got to make it something substantial. Uh, by the way, I think there's a better chance of a Derek Barnett three-sack day on Sunday than Jordan Howard being the odd man out and being deactivated for the game. That's not going to happen. Howard, uh, I'll stand by my prediction of Howard will – get the most carries, more than Miles Sanders and or Boston Scott coming up on Sunday. All right, Ed, we assume with or without, uh, however, they're going to deploy the backs. It's not going to be an RPO Sunday for the Eagles. They've kind of put that one in their rearview mirror, as well they should. Uh, And I'm not saying they won't run any, but it used to be the majority of their plays were RPOs. Um, That's not the case. The more standard NFL uh, set up is the way they've been going with it. And it's been quite successful for them through the last three weeks against the Lions and the Broncos, and even pretty good offensively against the Chargers. Should we be critiquing the head coach because he was the one who decided this was the best way to get the most out of Jalen Hurts? That because Hurts has his scrambling abilities that with the RPO, pull it back, take off, make a play. Uh, we can certainly agree that Jalen Hurts' production has been better since they put in the RPOs on the back burner. Should we be critiquing the coach? Because at the start of the season, he thought this was the best way to run his offense, uh, to try and make the most of his quarterback. <clears throat> there might have been some missed opportunities early in the season with the, you know, the stubbornness of sticking to that plan. But, you know, when you come in as a first year guy and it's probably the same in any job, you're, you're trying to figure out exactly, you know, what you have around you, um, how the operation is going to work, what it's going to look like. You're still figuring out your personnel, what you have. And, um, you know, it might've been, he knew that they want to figure out what Jalen hurts is, you know, there probably was some of that trickle down from the front offices this season's going to be about Jalen Hurts. We need to know if he can be the guy. So, you know, it almost seemed like maybe to the extreme, and I know Nick Sirianni loves to say a wise man avoids all extremes, but I think as a wise man, he wasn't avoiding the extreme, and he was really going extreme and using Jalen Hurts and um, trying to find out what he was. And maybe that was, like I said, the front office wanted to see what he was, and uh, they put a lot on his plate did too much with him. And now you're seeing the evolution of an offense. You know, Nick Sirianni is learning what his players do. You'd like to say the same about Jonathan Gannon on the defensive side of the ball. Um, I'm not sure you can, but I think that uh, Sirianni's figured out what this team is, what hurts can be. And he's playing to it. His job is to win games. And now he's kind of figured out a formula to do it. Now, listen, we all talk about running the ball and the saints are very good. Obviously it's stopping the run number one in the league against the run. They came in with that ranking last year in the Lincoln financial field in December and the Eagles ran all over them. But, you know, I think you need to kind of surprise them. I wouldn't be surprised if you see Sanders and Howard on the field at the same time, or Sanders and, and Boston Scott in the slot, you know, you try to run that 21 personnel, whatever it is with the two running backs. I wouldn't be surprised if you see that, if you see kind of them trying to catch the Saints off guard, if you will, um, to maybe open up the, you know, the running game a little bit more, because it's going to be a tough uh, defense to run against. And that's been the formula for success for the Eagles is to run the ball. But I think they need to try to maybe do something a little more creative 
to get them open. And having Sanders at your disposal will only help, I think, in becoming a little bit more creative. Now, let's let's say they can't run the ball effectively, Ed. I think they're going to try. They, they've certainly understood that that's how this offense gets effective, and you can't just throw up your hands and say, oh, here's the big bad Saints. We can't run the football. They're certainly going to try. However, let's say they're not effective early. They're down two scores, like early in the season. What does Nick Sirianni do at that point? Is he even bob to the point where he's not going to completely abandon the running game? Or is it going to be like those early games where he forgets about it, puts it in the hip pocket, it's Jalen Hurts trying to throw the football, trying to scramble all over the place? Well, I'd like to think that he's evolved and he'll try to stick with the run in some format, format, but you know, let's not forget they have Devontae Smith. You know, he's developing into a, a superstar wide receiver one right under our right, right under our noses here. Uh, you know, they could certainly do things with him. Now, you know, this Saints secondary, obviously with Malcolm Jenkins uh, coming back to Philly, his la- last year didn't go so well for Malcolm. His team lost. Um, he's probably coming in with even more of an edge. And then, you know, Marshawn Lattimore is one of the best cornerbacks in this league. Um, and then I really like that rookie on the other side. And he was one of, you know, we talked about Javante Williams, the Denver Broncos running back, one of my favorite players in the draft. I, I really like Paulson Adebo coming out of Stanford, you know, a long corner, didn't have a real good final year in college, but talking to David Shaw about him, there were a lot of reasons for that. Uh, I, I like Paulson Adebo and this kid's got two interceptions this season. And I, I think he's, You know, he's pretty much under the radar as one of the top defensive rookies in this league. And this is going to be a tough defense to throw against, too. So you're going to have to be able to keep running the ball. You're going to because that will open up some play action stuff, too. And that's what you're going to need to kind of beat this team, I think, in the air is to keep them off balance. You know, you're going to have to come up under center and drop straight back and try to find Dallas Goddard. And as Jody mentioned earlier in the year, earlier in the show, it was good to see Dallas Goddard get out there yesterday with his helmet on and, and do some things in practice. He was listed as limited. That's a good sign, but he can't clear protocols until Saturday. So it'll probably be Saturday before we hear anything about him. But again, he's a big part of this passing game. We saw that before he got hurt last week, he played 13 snaps. He was targeted twice. Uh, So they're going to do some things in the passing game, but I think John, it all starts with the running game. You can't just abandon it. And I hope Nick's learned that, that this running game opens up things in the passing game, too. So you, you have to stay with it no matter what the score is. If you're down, you know, 14 to three uh, in the second quarter, you, you have to still stick with it because that sets up other things later in the game. All right. If uh, we've got the right read on this, that <clears throat> the Eagles may have a tough time running the football, something that has become the heart and soul of their offense over the last month. When they play very good football, going to be very difficult against its same defense, maybe the best in the National Football League against the run. That means we may not see a lot of scoring drives. If the Saints are going to be without their two stud offensive tackles and are going to be going with backups, it may not lend itself to a lot of offensive scoring drives. What if this becomes a punter's game? Can Aaron Sipos win this game for the Philadelphia Eagles? It would be nice if it became a punter's game because Sippus is good and the Eagles have already played two games this year where the punter hasn't seen any action at all. So yeah. if the Eagles are forcing punts, that's a good thing. Uh, and if Yeah, the, but I got the Saints forcing punts too. So yeah, it's a I, matchup of the two punters. <laughs> will this be that type of a game where field position will decide it, special teams will be key? I know John's getting tired of me talking about Delonte Harris, but he's one of the best return men in the National yeah, Football League and has become a contributor on their offense with his ability to get uh, behind defenses over the top. Uh, that that might actually favor the Saints if it becomes a your punter against my punter type game. Well, let's not forget Jalen Rager. You know, I know people are down on him Can as we? a receiver. <laughs> But but listen, this kid, you know, he took a 71-yard punt back against the Packers in Green Bay last That's year. True. I mean, if if you scheme him up, he he can take the ball too. You know, if you're going to talk about Deontay Johnson being this, you know, you know, the Devin Hester of re- punt returners, then I don't think you can forget about Jalen Rager in the punt return game either. I mean, this kid's capable. 
of going the distance. He's done it before. So, yeah, if this becomes a punting game, the Eagles are going to have to do better. I mean, they gave up a 19-yard return against the Broncos that set them up on the plus side of the field. Uh, you can't do that in this game. And Deontay Johnson is going to be dangerous. And like you said, Jody, even on against defenses, he can get you – get by a defense, but can Trevor Simeon get him the ball? Will he have time enough to get him the ball? And if he does, can his arm make that throw? I mean, we'll see. Um, but, you know, I would like to see a punting game. I think it's going to be a low scoring well, game. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm going to say this, Ed. If it comes down to returners, the Saints are going to win the game. Yeah. Uh, Deontay Harris is uh, – he's a big-time returner. Um, you know, he's five six. He's like a, a sort of scat back, water bug, very fast type of guy. So he doesn't play a ton of reps at wide receiver. It's about 30%. So they can't put him out there much. But when he's out there, he's always running by people. One of the most disappointing parts to me about this Eagles offense is their inability to get that third player. They have Devontae Smith. We know Devontae Smith is 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 going to be a great receiver in this league for a long time. We now know Dallas Goddard is what Howie Roseman said he was when he traded Zach Ertz. There will be no discounts on Dallas Goddard. He's a really good player when he's out there. But who is going to be that number three guy? Wes Watkins is right now. Jalen Rager's an afterthought. To me, it's a are, – are, is Jalen Rager even salvageable at this point? I don't, know, don't even want to talk about the return game. As a receiver, is he salvageable at this point? Or is he, need, is he one of those guys who needs just uh, a new new scenery? No, I, I think he's salvageable. I don't want to give up on a, uh, you know, a guy you drafted in the first round. I, you know, he made a nice catch last week. Uh, you know, they only threw it to him one or two times. He's really not that involved in the game planning. So, you know, if you're looking for a third guy, Quez is probably the third guy. I know they may not have be taking advantage of his skill set, which is go deep. You haven't seen a lot of deep shots. And again, I'm still would like to see the Eagles open the game with a play action and chuck it deep to Quez Watkins on a on a straight fly down the sideline. But um, yeah, I think if you're looking for a third guy, it's probably Quez at this point. But I, I'm not ready to say Jalen Rager's unsalvageable. I I just don't think he's a big part of the game planning. Um, you know, he's more your third or fourth option. Um, they're using him in the run game, um, but we haven't talked to him in a while. So I know he's pretty frustrated with his role. Uh, but, you know, I just think it's because the Eagles just aren't really game planning. They know what they have in Smith and they know what they have in Goddard. Um, they like Quez. And now you're going to bring <clears throat> Miles Sanders back into the loop um, probably. And then he becomes a weapon. Uh, not so much maybe in the past game because his hands, you know, haven't been the sharpest in the last year and a half. But, uh, you know, he's another guy that, that can offer you some explosion. So I just don't think Rager's part of the game plan. If you make him part of the game plan, maybe he could do a little bit more. Um, just haven't seen them try to exploit him at, or, you know, u- utilize him at all. If the first play of the game is a uh, play fake and – uh, Quez is flying down the sidelines, gets by the defense. Malcolm Ra- Malcolm Jenkins trailing him, not getting yeah. there in time. Yeah. It hits Quez's yeah. hands. Is he going to catch it or drop it? <laughs> well, he dropped it in Denver. That's I'm why I'm say, asking. Yeah, I'm going to say he's going to catch it. I All think right. he's going to catch it go, more Quez. often or not. Yeah. All, All right, Ed, let's catch. get you on record. SI.com backslash NFL backslash yeah, Eagles. Uh, EagleMaven.com, who's going to win this football game? Big one. If the Eagles can get the tie, they already have the tiebreaker on Atlanta. They got the tiebreaker on Carolina. Can they get the tiebreaker on another NFC South team? And their first win at Lincoln Financial Field. Yeah, that's the big one. Can And their first two-game winning streak. Um, gosh, I mean, this is – the This, to me, I think is a game the Eagles can win. I really think they want to try to find a way to win at home. If they don't, they're not going to have another opportunity until they come out of their bye, and it'll be a week before Christmas before they'll have another chance to win at home. So I I really think this is a kind of a golden opportunity for them to find a win at home. You're playing against a third-string quarterback and Trevor Trevor Simeon. 
You're going to have to find a way, obviously, to slow Alvin Kamara. He's their dangerous part of this offense. Uh, I like the way Jonathan Gannon adjusted in Denver. He played his back, uh, his cornerbacks up on the line. He brought his safeties up closer, knowing Teddy Bridgewater probably wasn't going to beat them over the top. So he played everything closer to the line. As soon as guys caught the ball in Denver, players, defenders were there to tackle them before they could get any yards after the catch. I think they're going to play a similar style. And I think the Eagles kind of have a game plan like they did against Denver. They're going to get after Simeon. They're going to play closer to the line. I think they're going to be able to run the ball a little bit, but I also think they're going to get the ball to Devontae Smith and Dallas Goddard. I like the Eagles in this game. Uh, low scoring game, probably something along the lines of 21 to 17 Eagles to win. Eddie Kratz on the Eagle bandwagon this week. EK, thank you very much. Appreciate you coming on board. We'll talk to you again next week. My pleasure, guys. Thanks. Have a great Thanks, Ed. You got it. That's Ed Kratz here with us on uh, Birds 365. Yeah, the one thing I got to disagree with that, he's going back to Green Bay of last year to yeah. accentuate Jalen Rager's yeah. foot returning ability. Well, got it. That you know, was September of last year. Ed, we're now in November of 2021. He's You're trying to be positive, to I think. 2020? Jaylen, you know, Jalen is struggling. I think everybody sees that. And, you know, maybe I, I, I'm i being a little bit harsh. I accuse you of being harsh on certain players. Um, he's still a very young player. But, you know, there's just times where – I'm, and I'm not saying we can't rescue his career somewhere else, but sometimes you just need that change of scenery. I think we're at that point with Jalen Rager's – from Jalen Rager's standpoint, I'm not even talking. The Eagles aren't using him. That's right. He's not even in the game plan. 